Hello everybody, this is TechCut. In this video, what we're going to be doing is installing the heat sinks as well as the fan for this Raspberry Pi. This is the Starter Max Canna kit. And I did notice that some of these kits do not include the fan, so what I'm going to do additionally is do some light thermal benchmarking just to see if there's a significant difference if there is and is not a fan within this little chassis here. So first what I'm gonna do is take this Raspberry Pi out of the box here, take off this plastic cover, and then first things first, we have this fan. I mentioned in the unboxing video, this is by far one of the cutest little fans I've ever seen my entire life. You see it right here, branded can of kit. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and take these three heat sinks out of this Ziploc bag. Now we're gonna have three heat sink sizes, small, medium, and large, and just look at the small one. This is one of the littlest things I've seen this kind of was difficult for me to put on so if you do have like tweezers or something you could use it might be beneficial if you have sausage fingers like me so with that the larger heat sink is going to go over here on the processor this medium sized heat sink is going to go on our memory module and then the smaller heat sink like we said is going to go onto our USB controller so with that we could go ahead and pick up our first heat sink there's a little blue strip over the adhesive so you're going to want to give that a peel to expose the thermal pad and then very carefully set this on your CPU. Once you put it on there, you're going to, not going to want to uh, try to pull it off. So try to make sure you line it up as good as you can. And then when you do get it on there, make sure you apply a little bit of pressure so it has a good bond. And there it is. It's looking beautiful. So now we're going to go ahead and repeat the step for the medium and small one. First, peel off the back of the heat sink for the memory module. Go ahead and put that on there, apply a little bit of pressure, and then again, repeat the process for the USB controller. Again, at least on my Raspberry Pi, this is the Pi 4. It's going to be the little chip behind the USB 3 ports. So again, set it on there, apply a little bit of pressure, and there we go, you now have your heat sinks installed. So now what we're gonna do is plug in our fan. And we're gonna be plugging it into these two pins here. In the far corner, they're gonna be the second and third one in closest to the edge. And when you go ahead and plug this in, you're going to install the red wire on the second one and the black wire on the third one with the little metal portion pointing towards the actual Raspberry Pi, and it is installed. So what I'm gonna do real quick is put the side panel back on over all the IO ports. Obviously making sure I do not clip any of the wires for the fan. And now when we actually install the fan, I usually find the best orientation is to have the Kanakit logo facing the board so it's visible if you do take off this little top panel and have the actual orientation against the Raspberry Pi logo as shown in the video. This will ensure you give the wires the most slack possible so you don't accidentally end up pulling them. So with it all installed, we could go ahead and flip over the panel and just go ahead and place it making sure the wire is all the way in there when you push it down. And now our Raspberry Pi is ready to use and it should have fairly decent thermal performance. So once I did get these heat sinks and this fan installed, I went ahead and loaded up the ARM version of Pop OS, which by the way, I'm gonna be doing a separate video on that. So make sure you are subscribed and you ring that bell so you do not miss that. What I did to actually measure these thermals is I ran Geekbench for the time it takes anywhere from uh, six to 10 minutes and I got the temperature of the CPU right after the test was completed. And generally idle temperature was anywhere between 38 to like 46 degrees Celsius. So running the first test and getting the temperature right after the fact without the fan, we were at 74.5 degrees Celsius. So that's a, a little toasty because if you compare that to the temperature with the fan, after running Geekbench 5, the ARM version, we were sitting about 50.1 degrees Celsius. So nearly a 25 degree difference between having and not having this fan installed. So when you are looking at these kits, I do highly recommend you purchase one that has a fan with it. Now this isn't as important and it's not what we're actually testing, but I might as well give you these Geekbench scores. Anyway, uh, between both of these tests, the single core performance was the same at 230. And there's a slight difference in the multi-core scores with uh, 633 without the fan and 654 with the fan. Meaning we do get a slight performance boost, but the length of the test wasn't really too long. So the thermals probably didn't have too much of an effect on the actual performance. If this was a much longer test, I'm sure these scores would have been a lot different. But that's what we got. I do hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have Mitchell Valentino, Sledgehammer, 
Phil, Matt, Kyle, Timo, Anthony, and Chris Curtis. You guys are some of the top tier Patreon supporters or YouTube members. I thank you so much for that, and thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members. Uh, if you like this type of content with the Raspberry Pis, make sure you let me know down below, like this video, all that good stuff. With that said, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day, and goodbye.